Hello, handies. Welcome back to the Too Much Time on Our Hands podcast. You may think we were about to do a podcast on dystopian futures, but after a brief discussion, we said we'll go back to the original dis- thought, which is great adaptations. Uh, but one of the reasons we were going to discuss it was Fallout, which is, of course, an adaptation of a video game. So that's quite exciting, too. So to discuss this epic topic that we're going to try and crimp down to a good 45 minutes here, uh, we have Russ. What's up? How's it going? Say it, Russ. Say, say, it say, say what? Say how it is going. Repeat after me. Hello. Hello. Handies. Oh, it's just so. Say it. Something about Dad, somebody use the voice staring you in the eyes and angrily demanding that you say it just makes it even more creepy. Say how much you love handies. Uh, love handies. Say it. Uh... Fine. Duncan. Hi. How's it going? Hi, Dan. Hi, Handies. Yeah! Thanks for listening well done, and for Duncan. watching. Duncan got the memo. <laughs> <laughs> I love a Handy. Yeah, who doesn't love a Handy? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we're going to be talking great adaptations tonight. Um, based on the basis that Dune is apparently the only film that's come out this year. Um, by the looks of things, if you, if you read any news, there's um, it's, it's killing it. In the box I think office. a lot of things were scared of Dune as well, so they've, they've they should be out June, of that sort of release slot because there's a big fuck off worm that comes up and eats everything. Oh, I, I think. Okay, yeah, we'll go with that. Sure, yeah, that's why they were scared of mm. Dune. Uh, so great adaptation. So anyone thinking we were going to talk about 40k tonight? Now we're not. Well, I mean, <laughs> we might be able to shoehorn it in a little bit. So here's what the original plan we had for this week. We were going to do... Um, Shit on Zack Snyder. <laughs> we, we're not going to do that. Some people fun. like Zack Snyder. That's that's up, that's up to them. So try and keep it relatively positive. But we were going to do like um, uh, 40K inspired TV series, movies, and vice versa. But uh, Adeptus Ridiculous has already done that. And they've done a much better job than, than we could ever do. So, uh, And I learned stuff about that. Yeah. Like the My, event, event yeah. horizon yeah. writer going. Oh yeah, I I was big into forty k, hmm, so yeah. I didn't directly. It was just in my mind. I mean, so no shit though, right? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, like it's very, <laughs> it's very. It's not even just like on <laughs> something weird happens to the ship. It's using as its method of traveling faster than light, going through hell. Warp. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah, he he he's um, it's it's, it's widely considered like uh, an unofficial like prequel to Warhammer Forty K, isn't it? You can you can kind of see it like being like, you know, lo- long long before the Imperium or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But you know, the warp has always been there. Yeah. Slanesh. Slanesh. That's not always been there. Anyway, this is not but, what we were meant to be also talking about. Has also been there. So. Just because Slanesh was... See, we're talking about 40k already. Just because Slanesh was born at a certain point in time, they have always existed. But, no. Yes, timey-wimey Jeremy Berrimi. The, the the warp doesn't use time in the same way. So they have... Like, de- demons and warp entities are both immortal and don't exist at the same time. No, Russ. As soon Eldar as they came... murder-fucked Slanesh into existence. And as, I don't as, care and as soon as they'd done machine. that, Slanesh had always existed. The same as when the, the Necrons basically created the rest of the chaos. Hmm. Anyway, anyway, adaptations. <laughs> so, like, Dune's killing it in the box office. Uh, I got a message saying, hope there's going to be no spoilers. I mean, two-thirds of the people on this podcast have not seen the film yet so there will be no spoilers of the film however no. the book's been out for a while yeah so so there we go it's quite we difficult to spoil as well House. especially after this one because shit get weird after this one he's doing the third one yeah wow. is that uh june messiah <laughs> yeah and absolutely that that's where you leave it <laughs> yeah like that that is the last vestige of yeah you're not just going wait what 
Yeah. No, Children of Dune is the last. Yeah, you're right. Dune Children... Messiah, Children of Dune, because that's when Leto decides he's going to do his shit. Yeah. Making some Iron Brew tonight. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah. Yeah. So he decided to do the third film. They might shoehorn in a fourth one. Maybe Zack Snyder or. Well, Zack Snyder could do that one. Could do a great job, couldn't he? Yeah. <laughs> We'll well, to, as we know, Rebel we'll Moon, Rebel Moon some of this watched and... more than Barbie did, didn't it? So, you know. But th like, I think like he might think he's good for it because, like, say what you like about it, Dune is a slow movie. It does not rush things. Whereas, and, and Zack, because Zack Snyder will think, well, you know, a slow movie and a slow motion movie are basically the same thing. That's how he'd do the shields, wouldn't it? Mm. doing like super slow motion yeah I, I genuinely think he is it's only a matter of time before he releases a film which is entirely in slow motion yeah and he should re release a sped up version which is only like 20 minutes long yeah yeah well, to avoid spoilers mm -hmm. um so i'm still working my way through june one mm -hmm. um uh jumping straight into good adaptations visually it is bang on how i could a lot of it is bang on of how I imagined it. Mm -hmm. um, some of it is better than I could imagine it. Denis Villeneuve, pretty good at this, isn't he? I mean, he's quite it, good at this sort of thing, isn't mm, he? It doesn't have to be said. It, it's it is visually beautiful. The first it's, tune it's, it's is quite, just fantastic. Like on the face of it, that is a simple world to realise. June, yeah. it's, it's it's Star Wars rules for planets. So Arrakis <laughs> is a desert planet. <laughs> You know, that's um, what I was thinking. Was yeah. What's the place they come from called? I keep wanting to say Caliban. Uh, uh, I, I can't think of it. It's, um, it does sound like Caliban, doesn't it? It is very similar to Caliban. Like, why can't can I, can I mind it? No. Uh, anyway, the place they're from, it's like Scottish Highlands, stormy cliffs, oceans, that kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, there's not really many other places that you see, are there? No, not really. But where where they've done so amazingly with that film is is the like the details and things like the way the the ornithopters look, the way the oh, still suits them. look and work. It's it's all just so nicely done. The, I, I had a thought while I was on the way here that mm. what we could have done is solve dystopian problems by combining two dystopian futures together. So combine Waterworld with Arrakis, for example. <laughs> that kind of thing. You know, and like, a load of wet yeah. sand and undrinkable water. <laughs> true. True. But, uh, it, 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 you know, what, you what are you moaning it. about? Problem solved. In it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Problem solved. Um, so adaptations. Caladan. That's yeah. it, Caladan. Caladan. That's Caliban's, it, yes. we're not going to go into what Caliban is, Duncan, because mm -hmm. I think we should ban ourselves from talking about it right now. Caladan is the planet. Yeah. The Atreides planet. <laughs> Caladan's the homeworld of Dark Angels, but whatever. Yeah, uh, so, like, just... <sighs> I was just saying that we couldn't remember. It sounds so similar. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. June is beautifully done, and it is... a. Like, yes, the gyrocopters are exactly as they're described in the books. Yeah amazing i kind of want one compared, like, compared to the be. um the david lynch version where they're like well doing the wings is going to be quite difficult isn't it <laughs> so they just don't have any wing they just boxes they go and fly around i think lynch did a pretty good job like, like, like the... vi visually yeah. his one's yeah. spectacular um yeah but it was obviously limited by the technology of the time and mm. the sheer batshit craziness because you know he so you like about Villeneuve did not have the balls to represent how they do space travel in that movie with a mm. giant fucking mutant worm getting absolutely caned off its gourd and hallucinating them across the universe he just had a jump cut from one planet to the other they had that the was the chicken's way mm -hmm. out Where's, they where, where's our 400 foot long if, navigator mutant guy if we're talking great advertisements that probably won't be the last time we talk about a ring tonight <laughs> but um it's um it, it yeah 
I, I just like that David Lynch just went, so who do you want as Paul Atreides? And he just went, I would like Kyle McLaughlin, please. That's a flawless <laughs> Lynch impersonation, by the way. Absolutely you're amazing, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And Sting as, I don't know, whoever Austin Butler plays him as now. I can't remember his fucking name in, in one of the Harkonnens. Yeah, he's, uh, isn't he, he's Fade Ralther, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it it does amuse me that that Denny's Villeneuve, famous race driver Villeneuve, um, and we got the Harkonnens, who's you know Harkonnens, like throughout the whole film. That's I couldn't stop thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's so specific. Yeah, I can. Yeah, so yeah, um, yeah, Austin Butler. He's a good-looking lad, isn't he? <laughs> anyway, um, so it's just. <laughs> so, um, so uh, great adaptations. June, June's obviously that Dennis Vona has done a great job, uh, seemingly doing the impossible with Blade Runner as well, which is once again an adaptation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, a remarkable and so- bringing to life of a world. <clears throat> it's almost like almost harder to do because you sort of you know, you know what the world, you know what Earth looks like, you know what. Los Angeles looks like and yeah. it has to build realistically and believably from that whereas we don't know what Arrakis looks like I mean it, no but you know what I mean beach? it's like it, you're not going to look at the at the layout of the city and go well that's not accurate because mm. the town hall's actually over there isn't it I I, I think what's been oh, the problem is June and um Two androids, uh, dream of electric, electric sheep, sheep. Yeah. is uh, two very different lengths of book, yeah. which kind of gives you the free way to do. I think it's it's that kind of middle. It, you can't have a book that's in the middle. Like Philip K. Dick always wrote everything very short. Yeah, and that gives you a lovely platform to then just do whatever because he doesn't actually describe Los Angeles, so you could work with whatever you want. You know it's the a weird future, but he doesn't really describe it. He he's very economical on words, um, but he packs a punch. Whereas Herbert, my God, waffles on, but he's very descriptive. So yeah. it means that when you come to doing a film, you can go, well, we know what the setting is, we know what the ships are like. We, we you get a full description, so you can just go, well, we can bring that kind of description to life, um, and maybe some of this means that we can cut down on everything because we can also change some of the we we don't need to the long speeches because Mm. there are some very long speeches so it it's i think the core is you sort of keep the core of the story and you play around the edges of that Mm. rather than so, so I think with Philip K, well, I think uh, Dan's pointing out, do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep is, is very different from the Blade Runner. And yes, mm. it is, yeah. It um, is, but and, it, the, the <clears throat> core of it is kind of there. That's what I'm trying to, that's what I was about to say. So like, the, 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 what's so great about Blade Runner, in my opinion, and why it is, and I will not be taking questions on this, why it is Ridley Scott's best film, um, is that it's, uh, and at, uh, Something that someone like Philip K. Dick lets you interpret the world as it is because it is so sparse on details. So you can create a story in this mm. world based on the book that's also your own story as well. Um, yeah, which, whereas, is, which is where these yeah. things thrive. Like an, an adaptation. Yeah. Like it, it should change things. Yeah. You know, a book is written as a book, a movie should be written as a movie, a game should be made as a game, and things need to change to get the best out of the medium that you're working in. Now, that being said, one of the reasons why Dune works and why Daniel Villeneuve has done such a good job of Dune is that it is pretty much, as Duncan said, what we imagined for a lot of the book. Um, with the exception that there are, there are, as you say, there are bits where it's better than you imagined. And that's Denise Villeneuve interpreting a book himself and doing what is seemingly the impossible. No one thought Dune was possible. Uh, mm. They thought best we're going to get the David Lynch version. And, and there's there's no right or wrong way of doing it. Like if you are in adapting a book that is incredibly like specific with details, and once again, we might get onto another book that's like that with four million songs uh, in it. Um, then 
then I think it's um, it, it's equally brilliant to say, right, so this is a world that I've imagined in my head, and when I go to watch the film, that's exactly what I imagined, to, okay, so there's this book, and this is loosely based on the book, but I can enjoy both the book and I can enjoy both the film and understand that they're very different things. Hmm. There we go. Yeah. That wasn't remotely about 40k. Well done. Yeah. So other great adaptations then. Do we want to just go straight to Lord of the Rings? Do we want I, to just go straight to I was trying to, to think of something else that's done it quite so well. Yeah. But it's genuinely quite difficult. Like yeah. I was, I was going to rip it's a... off uh, Ad, Ad Rick and just say Starship Troopers because <laughs> the book is serious like, and Starship Star, Troopers Star, isn't. Yeah, Star, that's a really good example actually of just taking <laughs> like of adapting something and changing it and making yeah. it into this ridiculously entertaining movie that still has the same message as the book but tells it in a different way that's more suited to apparently the book the was very serious and <laughs> whereas yeah, but like, the, the, like... the core message of the book is sort of the same. I haven't read it, but I have seen a, a read like reviews and essays of it. So I haven't. I, I couldn't tell you in detail, but um, hmm. yeah, I think like the overall sort of message is the same. It just has a complete wildly different tone. Yeah, but especially like, like you wouldn't that movie wouldn't get made now. But. I, I've never read the book. All I know is what they talked about on Adric, which was basically yeah. verging on propaganda at times. So, yeah, one is Space Marines and one is <laughs> Imperial Guard. Yeah. I know 40k reference, but it was Starship Troopers were... is a wonderful film as well. Yeah, it's 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 such a. I remember when I was a kid and I watched it. A kid, teenager, whatever. Uh, yeah, Dad said. I thought the Starship Troopers book was pro, was very pro fa pro fascist, and the film was a satire on that. Exactly. Oh, well, the, the book's like holding it up as like a oh, and this is the right way to behave. Hundred percent, yeah, because it oh, came. Jesus. It was on the, yeah. just out the back of World War One, World War Two. So yeah, but it's um, it, it the the Paul Verhoeven has done an amazing job of making a film that is that could just be seen as a dumb action film. Mm. Like there are people that watch that film and go, "This is just a really stupid action film." But it's not. It's so much better than that. And the older you get, the more you appreciate Paul Verhoeven as, an, as a director, as well, I've realised. Like, as a teenage, <laughs> teenager, I just thought he did dumb films like Robocop and Starship Troopers. But as an adult, I realised he did amazing films like Robocop and Starship Troopers. <laughs> so, like, it's, it, it's, it's one of those things that's like, when I was a kid, I used to like Robocop because it was gruesome. Um, and, you know, he, he didn't pull his punches. The, as you grow older, you realise going, this is a satire. This is this is ridiculous. The whole thing's insane. And the Starship Troopers is very much the same thing as well. Um, I will. As spoilers, I am preparing a deep dive, our equivalent of a deep yeah. dive, into Lord of the Rings. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Not the film. Let's. Oh. What, what? What? All all through across three parts. Yeah. To cover all three media. Because if we don't really, you know, that you, you know the plot. But anyway, but yeah, the film is a great adaptation of the of the book. It is. Are you going to be doing the radio play, Duncan? Is that what you're going to be doing a deep dive on? I've I've already listened to the radio play. Oh, it's so good. And it's so good. <laughs> it holds up still. In fact, we should do a love letters to Ian Holm. Um, yeah. Just frankly, he's brilliant. <sighs> Was brilliant. <sighs> I love Queen's Stone Age. Fair, fair. Sorry, carry on, carry on. I, I, anyway, I don't yes, whole, sorry, yeah. Russ. Let's let's well, talk on, about on Lord of the, like a lot of the things that people moan about about the film. I think were smart decisions that were made, like not having Tom Bombadil. That's the thing the that people Whites moan about, that isn't sort of it? Stuff. Now the Barrow Whites, yeah. Um, you 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 don't need it, and even with three very long movies, you've got far less room to work with than you have with a thousand page novel yeah so you know i i, I think those those decisions were were made for a reason some some and like bringing arwen much more into it as a character she's barely in it in the book things like that 
There's two women in the whole film. I know, but like that was still so like so massively like if you, if you got up from the book. To, to bring bring one in a three. bit more. Three. Galadriel features oh, a bit Galadriel. more. Oh, Galadriel. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I mean, that it, that is still an increase of sixty uh, thirty percent. Yeah. But because in the film compared to the book, because yeah, Arwen doesn't really feature. Yeah, she's in she's the better book. in it. She's the, that's they they play. She's fucking perfect in that film as well. Like, yeah, and also, like she has she has some agency. She actually does like, some yes. stuff in the well, film. Because you well. don't. You, I will say that the radio play also doesn't have Tom Bombadil. Hmm. Yeah, because it's up. fucking weird. He's, he's like, weird, and it would just I leave you Tom thinking. Bombadil. Like yeah. it, it, in the film, especially, it would just leave yeah. everyone thinking, well, "Why don't you just give it to that guy?" Yeah. He can deal with it. He can clearly. He's got power. Over, and like it. It's just odd and complicated. And you don't. I am. Um, you also don't need. You know. Like. There's a lot of detail about. Fuck off, Jeff. In the show, Rosie Cotton and, and Lavelia Saxville Baggins. No, exactly. they're not yeah. actual characters. Like they're Baggins. Names. Yeah. Baggins family drama. Yeah. There is a lot of that before anything gets happening. Yeah. So. The. You know, I mean, Rosie only appears very late on mentioned in the book, mm-hmm. so hardly mentioned. Actually, the person who gets more attention in the book and the radio play than Arwen is the Y, the equivalent of the Y, the medicine woman in um, Gondor in Minas Tirith, mm. who does the healing and uh, guides Aragorn. Anyway, the, the the so the movie adaptation of the book is really cleverly done. It cuts out many characters i love tom bombadil but i also agree cutting him out is the most sensible thing you could possibly do um but i do love the tom bombadil bit i think it's a great part of the book i, I love reading that... about it yeah hmm. but anyway quite happy for it not to be in a film book wise is part it's of the show. Bit, yes they are the, but the but... whole bit with the in in the what's it called is it called the old word or the wild the wild word they're in there the for fucking wood. ages well, they get lost and the trees are malicious anyway uh, and they need to get eaten by a tree attacked by tweeds and... <laughs> by tweeds actually Tom Tom Cardi does for fellowship <laughs> perfectly <laughs> <laughs> they meet a weird bush guy <laughs> they've, they've seen elves before but now they've got a dwarf <laughs> Tom is an arsehole <laughs> I just don't agree with that but I don't think uh, <laughs> Boromir is totally awesome he's, anyway, he's briefly um, well he's only talking about the, the fellowship of the ring yeah in yeah. that song as well so like the yeah. fact that there's another two <laughs> books to come after that and boromir is being an asshole at that he point. is yeah it's mm. not his fault he's being an asshole the old forest yes <laughs> but he's being yeah. an asshole a borog has come <laughs> you, you shall, shall not with me with me <laughs> i'm not even third of the way through yet <laughs> So that adaptation of the fellowship off, recite it, it, entire lyrics of a Tom Cardi song down here. He's doing a song with Ninja Sex Party, and I am very excited about listening, hearing it. So. Well, that's going to be good. Uh, yeah. Ninja Sex Party appear now everywhere. I found a band called Galactic Kraken, uh, Galactic Kraken, and they, they are phenomenal. Mm. Um, but yeah, Brian from Ninja Sex Party turns up and it's in one song, and it's hilarious. It just turns into dodgy keyboards anyway um yes yeah, so cutting down the number of characters was key the i mean yeah return of the king is still long but there is nothing you can do about that uh actually boosting faramir as well the way they cover faramir and the fall of osgiliath is fantastic like yeah faramir is the adding fault potential fault to faramir because in the book he is can't do any wrong um and they yeah, also he's, he's have more realistically fuck faramir yeah. such a fucking bell end i hate faramir but like in in the in books the book he's, he's and basically in the films. he's just there so at the end they could be like oh Ao, and i'm afraid you don't get to shag Ar- aragorn but look we've got a guy that's a little bit like him does he have a brother yeah he was way cooler <laughs> he climbed mountains instead of taking helicopters yeah <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> You got, you got Boromir, but average. There you go. There he is. Boromir. Uh, Denethor. 
and the film really makes Denethor. I mean, he's an arsehole anyway, mm. but he really that is perfect. And the casting, the casting was also again brilliant. It was attention yeah. to detail. It was making the world the as good as you you could imagine it. There was nothing yeah. about Lord of the Rings the movie that I could not say. Yeah, yeah, that that he was quite important. Like perfectly. you could plot wise, you could get rid of him. Mm-hmm. Or, or like at least Denethor. get rid of get or like you could get rid of the whole like his oh he could just be you know the what is he called he's not the regent is he he's the, he's the steward the steward Gondor he can and then really he just get sort of goes away at the end but like having him act how he is it shows a lot more about Aragorn's character in his arc and why he doesn't yeah. choose to reveal himself yet and all that sort of stuff they also make Aragorn he actually does Aragorn better than in the radio play i agree aragorn is phenomenal it's probably the best maybe the best version of aragorn i mean yeah. it is it's, maybe. you couldn't really get it much better than that no you no. just need that bit where he barges in the doors <laughs> at um at edoras after falling off the cliff fighting the wolves actually peter jackson does a really good job of fleshing out all the characters because legolas is paper thin even in the books mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Legolas well. once again, he's one of those guys that gets less cool with age. But as you get older, you're like, Hang. he's just there because he looks cool. That's yeah, that's literally. Gimli was right. He is a prick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just surfs down shields and throws himself round elephants, and and <laughs> that's about it. Oh, no, climbs up. He gets on a horse. Weird. That's how, that's what he does, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, where he, he can't. He like onto yeah. the horse. He can't just do it like a normal person, can he? That was a very early use of digital doubles. Yeah. So that's a, there's a bit. It, it starts from a shot of Orlando Bloom, just probably just sort of jumping, mm. and then he's taken out and replaced with a full CGI Legolas that then has to get on, go from there to riding the horse and it just wasn't it, it just didn't quite work I agree Dan, most overrated character in the films is Legolas 100% um, yeah. not overrated, Aema I love him, I still Fucking love him love how big is his dick <laughs> <laughs> massive man it's remember huge. when we yeah. came we, we came out watching Two Towers yeah. and we all agreed biggest dick, bigger than the horse that when that horse riding it had six legs. <laughs> six. Horse's dick is massive. Oh right, okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Russ, try and keep up with the complicated math that sums here. Yeah, please. <laughs> anyway, that adapt what they do in the movie is also really clever because in the book it's um oh what's his name? Oh, I can't remember home hand or something anyway it, there is another warrior of the mark that uh gandalf goes off to get but removing him makes sense and having aomo because adds yeah that other guy, and... he is in the movie that other guy he's just kind of like other rohan other dude guy with good beard he's is he ugly aomo the guy that's always next yeah to the guy the guy that's <laughs> yeah, hanging yeah. out and he, and he like is it glamdring i think is he? no that's yeah no, that's the horse, isn't that, it? No, or the sword. Glandering that's the sword. Is the sword. sword. Before anyone says it on the fucking chat, that's the sword. Fuck. Ah, he's called something yeah. like that. Um, oh, he's he's like Theoden's. He, um, Gam, 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 Gam or, uh, no, the Gamling the guy like in the in the gambling in the film, but in the book, it's a guy who's meant to embody uh, Helm, as who gives the name to uh, Helm's Deep. But actually, I, I, I in the panicked film. and just typed "go Rohan person" into Google. <laughs> Didn't it wasn't helpful. I thought Hel- Helm Hammerhand. That's not someone who goes easy on himself when he's having a quiet night in, is it? <laughs> how how do you get that nickname? Almost pulverized my own penis once. Um, so I'm gonna I'm just go through the some of the chat. Uh, oh why? Because sa- for- they they've got some good points. So, no, bookwise, Saxville Baggins. Will you stop being rude to the people that actually listen to this? Uh, <laughs> bookwise, the Saxville Baggins are part of the Scouring of the Shire. It's a good point. And then they obviously got rid of them uh, because it couldn't. They couldn't do that. Please, 
another film if they're going to do that uh glad they cut the bloody songs from the books as well so my, my copy of lord of the rings is split into six books and pretty much one of those books is all songs yeah and walking like half of two towers is songs and walking and it's it's it, it's too much it's too much legolas is the most overrated character in the films and brooke agrees i totally agree uh jack says i thought book denethor was miles better there in the book than the movies i thought they were pretty close book wise he's the old he's the old that sets up the defense of Minas Tirith, and the only reason he wants all ickheady was because of the palantine palantine what the palantine the, the reason palantir. he goes on yeah, I was about to say, I was, that's why i was getting confused yeah sorry he's trying sorry, to use jack. the palantir yeah yeah. It, it, he can't be corrupted by Sauron because he's too strong. Hmm. But um, Sauron just sort of gives him misinformation. He basically, shows him Sauron just really puts, depressing stuff, doesn't he? Just hmm. basically, Sauron just shows him the Daily Mail and GB News all the time, and eventually, it just breaks him, as it would any sane person. It is a, it's definitely a different take on on Denethor, though, isn't it? Like Denethor and this one's just like, I fuck me, my good son's dead. <laughs> Think, he's yeah, using the Palantir in the, in the movie book. as well. I think it's it's only in the yeah. extended edition, maybe. Mm. But I'm sure he I may have had a bit of a stroke whilst typing. I love you, Jack. <laughs> Just like Helm Hammerhand. I think, I think the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, the visual of when uh, Pippin is uh, singing mm. and then you've got the tomato juice you cannot eat. A, Tell me from, they I made really him do hungry. that in the audition. <laughs> it would be so good. I do love the, you make, like, can one you eat shot this in the most disgusting it looks like a 90s fashion. music video all of a sudden when like the yeah. camera's revolving round and it suddenly just looks completely different. Yeah. <laughs> I will say I didn't actually like the elves coming. I mean, as much as I like um, Haldir and I love the the best. Everyone loves. Everyone best. loves I think Haldir is trying to sneak in amongst the the, the ladies there with uh, with Aragorn. I thought you, as well. No, he's blatantly. How oh, how there is not is... trying to sneak in amongst the ladies, is he? No, he's, he's trying to he's sneak in and go. In. <laughs> we, we're here to fight with men. Let's go. All I don't, the I don't men think how there's limited by any like he's he's a couple of thousand years old. I yeah. think he's I think he's tried everything under the sun and then some. Kind of assume elves just do that, right? Definitely. If you're all that tall and good looking, mm. everyone's going to be into everyone. Yeah. Literally. Pretty well. I, I mean, as much as I love seeing how the I I actually miss the fact that the other rangers don't turn up, and I love that in mm. the book. Good point. Aragorn gets his his mob, and that is the cool support. Yeah, but, again, they would be confusing. Yeah, in the, I understand. In the, in the movie. Like, what, how already, are these guys? How, do, how, met, how come he gets to be king, but this one doesn't? Yeah, I, I do like the fact that we meet, and it makes sense because we meet Haldir previously, and then he comes along and then there's the emotional moment because Haldir dies mm. and then Aragorn really loses his shit and goes that was my lover fuck and yes Brooks nailed it hammer that's the dude yeah and looks like a budget cosplay hammer <laughs> fuck you Jack <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking but that's not who I was thinking of I was thinking of uh, gambling but typing in hammer into um, into Google was uh, more useful than Typing in Rohan Man. So, uh, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, that was useful. Isn't Rohan also like a menswear line? Yeah, yeah. I ha I have got Rohan trousers. I have still got now 24, 23 year old Rohan underwear. They are fantastic. Really, wildly unnecessary fact. Yeah. to mention. <laughs> also, buy some new pants, man. <laughs> They still, oh well, one of them's fallen to pieces and it's gone. But fallen the other one's still fine. Pieces. It's just a waistband. I don't, I don't know what we're doing differently, but I go through mine. 23 years is not an option. I admire your. Um, I do not. Thanks, Brooke. Um, I, I admire your um, <laughs> discipline in not scratching yourself there, Duncan. If that's the case, if you still got pants like that, or it's basically it's just like a tangerine right. sack down there, and he's hanging out left, right, and centre. <laughs> so we've just been talking about Lord of the Rings. There are other adaptations. Do we want to talk about Harry Potter, or do we not talk about that? No. Well, no let, so let's briefly um, 
without giving any sort of kudos to she who must not be named but mm. i think that the, the approaches to the adaptations are quite good examples of so like the first couple probably under studio pressure and general expectations but they're not really adaptations so much as page by page recreations like it is yeah. literally the book on the screen and frankly they feel it. a bit flat and lifeless and dull compared to Prisoner of Azkaban onwards where they start having some fun with it sorry I've got distracted by dad his underwear is sold, a leather coated hat wearing archaeologists are trying to break into his house to steal them. Yeah. <laughs> they belong in a museum! Of course, fair point. of course, Indy, none of it actually belongs in the museum. It belongs in the fucking country that it originally came from. But there we go. Um, well, so yeah, like, I mean, like, like your that, that thing that he's trying to pick up at the start, where, where it belongs is where you're where trying it is. to steal it from. Yeah. Yeah. You're actually, you're no different to the other guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, that does ruin Indiana Jones when you start thinking about it like that, though. I, anyway, I mean, <laughs> sorry. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, I know it's yeah, big. Bang Indiana theory. Jones these days would now be writing angry letters into the Times, saying mm. that actually it'd be a bloody shame if the if the British Museum had to start repatriating artifacts. Mm -hmm. Because Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. mm. Surely his artifacts would have gone to the Smithsonian. Yeah, they never seem to go anywhere, did they? They just got filed in in that that big room, didn't they? In the warehouse. Which is slightly... well, I think they were all things that Indiana Jones had found in some tomb somewhere. No, am I thinking of X Files as well? Probably, possibly. Yeah. Uh, Jack's already mentioned one that we haven't talked about: Jurassic Park. But do, do we want to finish on Harry Potter before we? Uh... No, I thought That's, that was I mean, good. Was, was the, the first couple, mm -hmm. relatively boring as movies yeah. because they were too faithful to the book. Yeah. Then you start having a bit of fun with it from you know getting some interesting directors in and actually just changing stuff, bringing stuff in, cutting stuff out, and the the later movies are much better. Yeah. If only there was an iconic British institution from the last sixty years that had managed to do that pretty much with every film they'd made and real and showed the way of what was a good idea of stay, steering clear of actually what was written in books to what you're going to put on the film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, never really happened though, is it? No one's ever done that with multiple actors wearing tuxedos. <laughs> Fuck you, J.K. Rowling, I'm going to shit on you. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, if, we're, if we're doing Bond, yeah. some of those, the films just don't. I, I read the books, the books relatively no, exactly. late, no, we're near. and like yeah. even if you look at the movies, which you know they've got some questionable politics to them these days, but Jesus, the books are fucking yeah, like <laughs> you, 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 uh, I I kind of no, want to see just it. no, yeah. Well, I wouldn't mind seeing a new adaptation of Doctor No because that book is crazy. It's also funny because it's got a giant squid. Mm. But the, yeah, the, the the books. I mean, like, you say what you like about it being sort of the time they were in and stuff. But I mean, like, it's, it's not just language that would no longer be considered acceptable. They are overtly racist. Those books. Yeah. It's really uncomfortable and sexist and problematic in many other ways. Mm. But like the the way. So like. I can't remember which one it is. But there's a bit where him and Felix go to a club in Harlem, and like they're just like looking at black people like they are exhibits in a museum. It's mm. it's really really quite creepy and uncomfortable. Um, an adaptation that I particularly enjoy is the Chicago Bears adapting Jalen Johnson's contract that I've just read <laughs> for seventy six million. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's an adaptation that I can get behind, that's for sure. Uh, Rohan uh, Man, the Rohirrim Dan. Jesus, you took me to the man's grave. Please make me proud. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, good point. <laughs> I told <laughs> Rohan Man, I panicked. That's all. <laughs> Rohan Man is not what they call themselves. I'm one of the Rohan Man.
Recording in progress. Hello. We hey, back? what happened? I don't know. It went weird for a second. Zoom crashed. There. Right, let's get back on. Yeah, like six people watching. That's a record. That's crazy. <laughs> I know. Yeah, Zoom just suddenly uh, disconnected and uh, went away. Oh, so it happens for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it happened for the three of us. That's what really matters. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do we really want... I mean, I actually can't remember the... I read the Jurassic Park book ages ago. I, I can't remember. It's all right. I've, I've read a few more books. So imp- they're, they're kind of all the same. And they always have sort of like a mixture of like really interesting, exciting sci fi ideas. And then just a bunch of stuff we think, well, no, that wouldn't fucking work, would it? Michael Crichton's the guy that writes all the law books, right? No, that's. Um... Uh, no, that's. Oh, Grisham. Mean, mean like. The Pelican Brief and stuff like that. Yeah, that's John Grisham. That's John Grisham. Yeah. Shows how little attention I've had. I have actually weirdly read the Jurassic Park book, but it was a really long time ago. Because I yeah, wanted more Jurassic it's, it's Park. Right. Like, and little did I know, I didn't want more Jurassic Park. Like a lot of the characters are very fine. different. Like Mr. Hammond <laughs> is a complete dick in the books. Oh, which like, you just can't imagine. Like, closer to uh, Richard Hammond then. <laughs> And uh, um, well, they, they, go, they make a much more of a point of them, like the dinosaurs aren't accurate in any way. They're made up, is what they're saying in the books. Like, this isn't an accurate recreation of extinct DNA. It's sort of we've basically just made a creature that probably looks a bit like dinosaurs probably looked, but like they actually sort of make a point of saying like what we've made here and called a Gallimimus is not what it would have looked like millions of years ago. Yeah. And the film does a perfect job of that. Well, I mean, they, they just don't bother. Because those velociraptors are not accurate at all. No, no, no. I like the bit where they sing the theme tune in the book. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's a bit like Lord of the Rings, but it's just pages and pages of da 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 Yeah, it's great. No football, Dan. <laughs> it's just exciting to me. That's all. Like it's good news. We've been trying to get that contract <laughs> done for ages, so it excites me. Um, what else? That, that I'm sure there's been other books <laughs> that have uh, been adapted to films. Well, we could do Lord of the Rings, do, Jurassic Park. Um, that's, that's most books, isn't it? That's it. Done. Sorted. Well, War, War of the Worlds has been done to death. death. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. Um, and it's weirdly none of the modern ones are really a good adaptation. It's all oh. the ones that were originally done. Hundred percent. I, I liked like, the Tom Cruise one. I, I liked it. I didn't love it. Hmm. Once again, it steers it steers I'm away just, from the original book as well, like massively. And the, the Jeff Bridges, Wayne, <sighs> Jeff oh. Wayne's. <laughs> Jack's brought up something that I genuinely forgot, but we need to talk about that. Um, what? Adapt, book the adaptations of TV series, but yeah, um, Jeff Wayne's Jeff Wayne's is a masterpiece. That's the as far as I'm concerned, that's the best it's version definitive. of War of the Worlds. Yeah, yeah. Mean, that's that's your go. It, there is. People just say War of the Worlds. That's the one you're talking about. If, you know, people say War of the Worlds. I immediately think da 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 and I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. Ooh la. <laughs> I might actually have to listen to that again because I love the song The Thunder Child The Thunder Child is fucking brilliant it's so song. fucking weird the whole thing's so fucking weird but it's it's great I love it <laughs> um, there's so many good uses of a theremin in there that it's just theremin perversions I like the bit when the main but bit anyway. kind of kicks off and you've got the do 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 that's so good yeah. um, Russ do you remember um, when you, you, me, and Mike lived together, and we got drunk one night, and we <laughs> <laughs> we fell asleep in our doorways. Well, we, went, we went camping, <laughs> which meant we slept on the floor Jeff in the hallway instead of in our beds. Um, with the Jeff Wayne's <laughs> War of the World soundtrack on, really too loud to go to sleep. <laughs> um, and then we had to go to work the next day. <laughs> 
What a night. <laughs> <laughs> I think, was it Mike's idea? Just from nowhere. Probably. Should we pull our mattresses onto the floor and listen to Jeff Wayne's Roar of the World? <laughs> Sounds like a Mike idea. <laughs> yeah, bless him. Um, <laughs> great times, though. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm right out of ideas on that. It's just, yeah, I agree. The movies in general, apart from like the really early ones, haven't actually been very good. Uh, yeah, I mean, my, okay, so. One of my sort of favourite dystopian worlds adapted for something, uh, well, I suppose there's two that are very closely linked, is The, the Crow and Dark City, which are uh, both. Oh, what's his name? Is it Alex. What's his name? Who directed them? I can't remember. Type Rohan Man, see what comes up. Rohan Man. <laughs> While you talk about that, Dan says he had a very similar experience listening to War of the Worlds. And Jack's brought up another book series that has been adapted into a TV series that we should probably talk about before we sign off. But, what, uh, The Witcher? No. Which is a good one as well. Which is one we should probably talk about as well, actually, for that matter. Yeah. Dark City. Dark City is really good. Was it? Mm. A, was it a whole year? Because it felt like it was really close. Because I really remember did. watching Dark City in the in the in the cinema, and then Matrix happened. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Dark City was a. That was an intense and phenomenal film. Yeah, really, really good. Crow's great as well, as you said. Oh, yeah, yeah. And apparently people can't hear you, Russ. We can hear you, yeah, but people can't hear you. So that's what I was being said. Which is weird. What did okay. what book OBS, did the OBS Jack... something weird? Mm, weird. Mm. Should oh. be back on. Um, yeah, in Dark Cities, the city's not real, and it's uh, the principle is so brilliant. Then Matrix came out, but yeah, and it's got fucking Keith Sutherland in it, mm-hmm. and William Hurt. Um. So we need to talk about the Meg. <laughs> I have never read the Meg books, but it fills me with joy knowing that they are based on books. Well, um, <laughs> apparently so the, the third a one's the craziest of the movie. One. There was the, the Meg was adapted from a novel. Yep. Wow. Yep. I know, right? A genius. Apparently, the third one's where it gets starts getting really crazy. And now, now I'm urging whatever studio it was that made the Meg, make the Meg three, please. Let we we deserve that. Just, like, they've <laughs> got to find that sweet spot between like the Meg and Sharknado. Yeah, if you're talking yeah. <laughs> going crazier. I want or Piranha Jason State three, uh, three yeah. double D or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I want Jason Statham. Uppercutting a shark. That's what I want. <laughs> so, yeah, apparently they are nuts, the, these Meg books. So, yeah, it's. I kind of want to read. I still have six books. I we want the six films, all right? <laughs> six books You're about for one guy fighting Fur- sharks. Yeah, You're looking for your out. Fast and Furious replacement. Nothing's ever going to replace the Fast and Furious films. Um, here's the problem with the Fast and Furious films: fifty percent of them are any good. The other fifty percent are fillers that that remind you that it exists, and that fifty percent of them are good. They've kind of they've gone in the sort <laughs> of like bell Star Wars of quality, Sorry. except that the first one is also the best one. So they yep. started off amazing, got shit for a Whoa. while, got really really good, and now they're kind of going shit again. Five is the best one. One and five are the best one. No. F- I'm not having this. No, five, <laughs> five is the best one. One's okay. The order goes. Oh god, there's ten of them now. Um, it, it, you, you have to properly think about it. But yeah, broadly, oh, yeah. 
One's the really good. Really fucking good. Yeah. Two, three, four, five. Five six, the best. Six, seven, seven eight, nine, nine, ten. And so I haven't seen ten yet. Oh my god, Jason Momoa steals the show in that. He does look like fun in that one. Oh, he's so much um, fun. First one nine, was a cheap nine, knock. Of nine is break. the one yeah. with John Cena in it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Who like? He's just a bad guy. Waiting nine. for him to stop being a bad guy and become family again. Like, oh yeah. right, yeah, you've done it. Okay, yeah, great. I love that family, where where no one remotely looks alike, and um, nobody knows anything. So, yeah. like, Dom had a brother and was married to Letty, and nobody knew anything about it. Yep. Yep. So fucking stupid. Yep. It's it's a bit weird. Um, the latest one's great, though. Well worth a watch. Yeah, um, to I follow. am going to really, have to watch. They're not so on going streaming back. anywhere no. that I've got access to. Going back, I'm going to have to watch the Meg. Yeah. Uh, I haven't managed to yet, but I will. I'm pretty sure it's a giant shot. It's a megalodon, so mm. I'm pretty sure Phil and will like it. Yeah. So I'm sure it'll be fine for a five-year-old. Yeah, I, I the don't Meg. know uh, how much the Meg is intended for an under tens audience. Yeah, no, there, there is some complex uh, political struggles in there for those films. Um, Has it got a giant shark? It does. The Easy giant shark things. is pretty violent as well, though. That's the only problem. It's, anyway, oh well, Jaws. Jaws is technically following sharks. Jaws is actually an adaptation from. A and book. isn't Deep Blue and Sea it's a as good well. one? <laughs> yeah, my mind. I that. think Deep Blue. Isn't Deep, Deep Blue, Blue Sea, sea is a massive also part meant to be? Shite, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's not yeah. Jaws, and the author of Jaws is also quite regrets maligning sharks so much. I think Deep, Deep yeah. Blue Sea was trying to be like tremors in the water. But it's just no good. Yeah. Also, Tremors. One of the best movies ever made. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to watch one film about giant sandworms. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> June is good. Yeah. But Tremors is perfect. <laughs> like, you can't improve that movie. We should mention The Witcher. That's a good shout, Duncan, by the way, as well. Based on books, which are based on books. games. Books are really good, but they're short stories. I thought, so, that, so like, I thought the, I thought the books, I thought the games were based on the books. So the games are set after the books. They're based and on the it in the sense games. that yeah. they're in the same yeah. world. But yeah, it doesn't follow. They're, they're short yeah. stories, so that leads really well to the episodic structure of a TV adaptation. Yeah. So like, uh, it plays the books, the TV series plays out pretty similarly. To the books because it's like each one's a short story essentially and they are all tied together by this i think the whole thing i can't remember the whole thing starts with he's fighting like like a vampire or something that might actually best him so he's he's like recounting like these stories in his head and the whole thing is tied by this that, that all these things have happened to him and and the, the tv series tied together by kind of like a narrative plot of like I don't remember, Nilf Guardians I think that's what they're called um, are Nilf Guardians Nilf Guardians as soon as I fucking said it that's the first thing that I thought but yeah um, <laughs> it's 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 set on one of the short stories there's one book of short stories but the rest are all linked which the which one is set on one of the short no it's, it's a selection of the short stories the, the books the first book covers like pretty much the whole first series it's it's i haven't read this i've only read the first book but i haven't read the second one but i've obviously seen the second tv series um it's really good the books are great and you find out why he's uh, jashka in the tv series rather than dandelion or as the audiobook calls him dandelion who's obviously never heard <laughs> of the flower the dandelion mm -hmm. um <laughs> so apparently jashka is dandelion in polish so that's why or something along those lines so that's why they because it's obviously set on like polish folklore isn't it so yeah weirdly no surprising about the yeah. witcher that i didn't think about 
Now, another thing that's going to be based on books will probably be the Horace Heresy TV series. No, I'm joking. We're not going to get into that. But it's... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Brooke says it's fine. My kids saw it. I'm taking... We mean the Meg here. So, yeah, there we go. You'll be fine. All right. Thanks, Brooke. I mean, uh, there's this... There's a really good song by a group called Howdy Tunes, and it's it's about the Kraken, mm -hmm. and it's got lyrics, and the boys love it. It is essentially, I think it sounds a bit like Megadeth, mm. um, Megadeth for kids, um, apart from that it has lyrics of, uh, I'll take what's due, uh, I'll eat you, crush your spine, your life is mine. Yes, metal all the way. So it's um, so <laughs> I think it'll be fine. And he also they love he loves Godzilla. Um, mm -hmm. Also, you've got to introduce him to Statham early um, yeah. because you give him a chance to get used to. Um, no, I want. Yeah, what's no, because the best, the best he'll look Statham at Statham and then he'll kids. just. Uh, and then yeah. he'll just look at Statham and then look at me and just go. <laughs> Point. I think you got to get get him used to that, like that idea earlier that not, not everyone looks and is as cool as Jason Statham. <laughs> I mean, nobody looks like Jason Statham and is, is yeah. as cool as Jason Statham. Technically, the Horus Heresy yeah. tabletop game is an adaptation of the books. The books, oh, the, 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 Horus Heresy, the other see, way around. This is where really. we get pedantic, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> They're, both, they're all adaptations of the well. same source. I'm guessing they they probably have some sort of like. Odex is a books. Yeah, but like they're, they're, it's all sort of hit and miss, isn't it? I, th I think like like if you read the in the in all the um, Horus Heresy books, they have like afterwards that the authors all write about, and it's quite interesting about the process of writing this because also like bear in mind that Star Wars couldn't do three linked up stories written and directed by separate people that mesh together yeah horus heresy they've done last count 460 books and they <laughs> mesh together came out pretty well two minutes ago done to rat rust so yeah, but, yeah. um and like so it, like the the process of like it's like 15 authors or something like it's quite an interesting process how they've managed to do this because you couldn't even like you've seen that fucking org chart of the reading order. There's no, so they funny. couldn't just write the plot and go, okay, that's that book, that book, that book. Really difficult challenge to sort of get this all together. And some of it, some of it existed already. Some of it didn't. Some of it existed but contradicted other things that were known to exist. So they had to sort of pick and choose what they were gonna, what was gonna be included and what was gonna be adapted. Yeah. I have just finished. Uh, I'm like two thirds of the way through the last end in the death book. That is, it's pretty unfilmable. I think. Like the the Horus and gonna... Emperor fight sort of spans billions of dimensions of existence. It's it's not going to be a simple thing to uh, film. Well, after seeing Dune two, that I said one thing. Push across the desk a blank check to Denis Villeneuve for anything Warhammer 40k related. <laughs> I Give him whatever the fuck he if, wants for this. I, I don't know if he's the right person. He fucking is. He would, he, he, is. he would be able to do uh, Lion Son of the Forest. It, that's right up the street. Mm. I've also just finished listening to that. It is a phenomenal. Yeah. But it's also almost, just the entire it's class of you. Two bit like, what would you do as the first? Movie. The very mind that most of the people that are seeing this aren't going to have a fucking scoob about any of this stuff. You you do Horace Heresy. Just start work your way through all sixty four films. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people uh, people will really start getting it at about the fortieth or fiftieth movie. <laughs> so yeah, we're just going to have to we have to ride the negative reviews and stuff until then. Just got got the through. Problem is, he's yeah, highbrow and artsy. The... He's not highbrow and artsy. He's just good. Okay, there's, there's a difference. He's got attention to detail and he yeah. does something beautiful. Also, like Stuff like Blade Runner and Dune could go very wanky very quickly. Yeah. And it doesn't. And he, no. he 
he, he's obviously the master of edging it because it doesn't go full <laughs> um dan says do something human focused to start like eisenhorn yeah i think that's probably the way to go do like yeah I think you, eisenhorn you need, or gaunt's you ghost need to ease like gently that. into that because otherwise or fuck that off and do infinite and divine let's just let's just go straight into it zero humans <laughs> Yeah. set billions of years ago <laughs> there you go right we Someone promise we weren't going to stop yeah go on oh yeah sorry no 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 oh, yeah. there was a someone did a tweet about um which 40k which warhammer general warhammer mm. character would use which pokemon i just said tracing the infinite has already gone and cut, uh, caught them all He's, he's, he is he playing 40k Pokemon. He's got, he's got all the Pokemon. And he's got everyone else. But, um, I would, yeah. I'd, I'd love to see the next ones in a film, to be fair. Anyway, um, Game of Thrones. We should probably talk about Game of Thrones. No. Play the big one. No? I think, well, no, we so, should talk about The Expanse. Think, <laughs> Game of Thrones was... It was very good when it was an adaptation when it got to yeah. the point where they had to make it up on their own and were having checks waved at them to go and make star wars movies which turned out to never have happened and they lost interest Thanks. it went bad that. very yeah. quickly hmm. so yeah as an adaptation it worked brilliantly yeah um cut out his annoying habit of giving 14 different characters the same name so that you have to have the fucking wiki open to be able to read anything but uh, yeah. yeah, as soon as they ran out of um, source material to adapt, it really went off the rails. Yeah. Well, the problem is that... It really felt like, you know, the... Is it Always Sunny? George Smith. Where it's like, and then the movie just sort of ends. Like, that's, <laughs> that's kind of how they wrapped up. That was like their pitch meeting for how the last what's, series is going to go. What's the line in that? Because with well, the sex, because like full penetration. And we're going to show it. We're going to show it. We're going to show it all. Show it all, <laughs> and it's just back uh, and forth, gunfight, penetration, gunfight, penetration, and then the movie <laughs> just sort of ends. <laughs> so, the main problem with both the books and the TV series of uh, Game of Thrones is that because George R R R R R Martin was it's also pronounced. involved Arr. in the TV series. Mm -hmm. Er, um, TV series. He started focusing more on the TV series than actually writing the books. So the book series, I believe, still hasn't finished. No, he's, person, that, I think he's that now man deliberately distracting everyone because he he made enough money to buy a DeLorean. I think he's fucking set. Like you know, that's all he wanted in yeah. life. But this guy I, is like I don't, the think, king I don't of think he knows how to end it. The no. the books are getting more and like they are not narrowing down to a final confrontation they are splintering and going off in weird directions and there's now like 50 there plots was... going on each of yeah. which could he... be the main one it's really i odd. i kind of lost interest in game of thrones i need to get back into it and watch it again at some point because i, I wasn't last, paying enough the last attention series or two just genuinely are disappointing and i just like i just like it's just i can't remember which old white dude is which old white dude yeah and there's just so many of them. It's but at least they've all got different fucking names on the TV show. Yeah, true. Um, so, uh, a couple of comments. Brooke says, Jason Statham put my kids through puberty early. Yeah, I'll do that to you. There we go. Rightly understandable. Yeah, I get it. And Dan says, sex and fighting pretty much summed up Game of Thrones. Or Stuart, Lee, Stuart Lee called it Peter Stringfellow's Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> this is very good. Um... I mean, there was another book series that got turned into a TV series. A uh, series, little series called The Expanse, uh, oh, that's that got turned into a TV series. We can't, we can't end without talking about The Expanse. Lock the doors. Um, <laughs> the Expanse is a very good adaptation of a TV series, in the Man, sense that it's the same writers. <laughs> it's the same guys. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's. What's so good about it is it was a few books in when they, they made the, the, the series and they took some liberties whilst also 
keeping it very close to the actual books. So series one is the first half of books one and two because they're told from different perspectives. So everything that happens in the books happens in the TV series, but it's just done in a completely different way. And it's, it, it works so much better because of it. Because you don't go back. Series book two happens the same time as book one, roughly. Just about. Um, and as a result, instead of having to go through like two characters throughout a whole series and then get back, get to series two and then go through two different characters but it's all happening at the same time. It's it's all kind of mostly at the same time. <coughs> Which works really, really well. Really great story as well. So and also it's a series with an end that could also expand uh into more series if they decide to do it that way as well. It expands is is, uh, is fucking great. The last, the last book finishes very, very final. But yes. It is amazing. But they never got to the last book because they only did the first six books, didn't they? So there's three books left. Yeah. But there's a very good reason why it's very difficult to continue from what I understand. I don't want, don't want to spoil it for anyone. No, but yeah, it's. Um, I haven't finished the TV series. Sorry, oh my I've God. I've only read really? the first book. I, I should really get back into those. They're All really good. the books are so phenomenal. I've only I've only read also, as far as the TV series, so yeah. Well, I, I need to read something that doesn't right. have everything. In everything. It. So uh, the expanse. Oh, it does. Like I mean, it's got the Martians. Out. Yeah, the Martian Marines are basically space Marines. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I'm, you, I mean, literal forty k space mm. Marines. So yeah. the expanse can be my bridging point I, back into non-space Marine books. I think y'all don't like Game of Thrones because it's just like shit that's already happened in your country, minus dragons. Yeah. Well, I think you'll find St. George Slade a dragon. Oh, yeah. Like, just because we don't have dragons now. Mm. Yeah, true. <laughs> that's amazing. Maybe this is true. Maybe maybe Game of Thrones is just like, ah, there's a Tuesday to us, so, you know. <laughs> Look, Game of Thrones, I mean, uh, in essence, a lot of it is based on the Hundred Years' War, which was actually 116 years. Um, <laughs> you had to be pedantic um, about your own fucking comment, didn't you? <laughs> and uh, the Wars of, War of the Roses. Mm. Um, yeah. And all that kind of medieval Which was shit. the last major war but, where dragons were deployed in any significant number. True. True. Yeah. They'd kind of phased them out for spitfires in World War II, hadn't they? So. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, dragons and gunpowder didn't really mix. And that that was the problem was they accidentally kept the dragons right next to the gunpowder magazine, and yeah. um, that's why Ucket Castle is a complete and utter mess. And yeah. that's why no one finds Nessie anymore is because actually Nessie was a dragon and blew herself up. People mm-hmm. still find Nessie, dude. Nah, that's no. not there. I think it's just I a big a fish like a whale or something. <laughs> I had a look. Did you? I've I've been in Loch Ness. Have you really? This is really interesting. Have you really? <laughs> in a dry suit. Yeah, in nice. October on Halloween. We were doing our testing and so I ended up in Loch Ness. It is so cold. It's also really black. It's like the, a darkness like nothing else. But anyway, mm. yeah. It was quite spooky. You can imagine. Mm-hmm. Sounds terrifying, yeah. Especially with all those like, you know, dinosaurs in there. Yeah. What do you think's in Loch Ness? I am uh, not biting. No? Uh, trees. trees. Lots and lots of trees. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, <laughs> as they decompose, they rise up and down, and there's uh, any noises. There yeah, is actually cause... a weird wind temperature <laughs> thermocline that actually creates a wave. Logs mm. in a fairly sort of, a sort of long... small but thriving tourist industry, which is keeping yeah. the story going. <laughs> yeah, true. Play. Right. Uh, and Nessie asked me about tree tree fitty. <laughs> um, I think yeah, Expanse is the gold standard of, of book adaptations as far as I'm concerned. So it is crazy. It's just so much fun. Yeah. Like it's Yeah, the the pacing of it is spectacular. Yeah. It's it's so yeah, well done. The... So it it's it's a roller coaster. 
That's yeah. what it is. Because it starts so slow. But the end and of every episode, it... you're like, you fucking what? Get the next yeah. one on. Yeah. The best TV show of all time, as far as I'm concerned. But that's just me. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking serious as well. I think that, that is series is um, perfect. Yeah. I'm going to say it's probably one of the... Oh, I don't know if it's... I don't know if I've read enough sci-fi, mm. but I would say it's definitely pro. I don't know. No, it might be up to there as the best. Yeah, it's be- It's actually. I'm going to put it out here. The Expanse book series is better than the Dune book series. I think like, so. Because it, it just gets really, me, really the weird Dune in books Dune. books have a real quality dip after the second one. Yeah, yeah. It, they're off a fucking cliff. And so, you're yeah. like, oh. Oh, you they are take the plunge nutter, into the you? plunge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Whereas um, expanse it, is I mean, solid just... throughout. Mm-hmm. Like, there's not a yeah, bad expanse. Completely. Book. Yeah. But I've read so far. I've read no. the last three. But yeah, it's it's no, oh. there isn't. So like, in short, all the characters are brilliant. Thank you the for expanse. This. Yeah, is so the good. best thing. Read it. Watch it. Watch it. Read it. It doesn't spoil in any way. The... Whichever way you do it. The Naomi episode in series five is one of my favorite TV episodes of all time. It's so well done. Like a proper edge of seat stuff as well. Um, and like endless amount of characters of women with, with a real agency as well. In it. it, it's great. It's, it's so good. Better than alien Tom. Ha <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I don't mean that aliens great. Um anyway, thank you for listening to what we eventually set up to be basically another go round at us trying to get you to watch the expanse. Mm-hmm. It was worth mentioning the one thing I did want to talk about was the fact that we've had a trailer for the, the Fallout TV series, which looked really good. I'm I'm very excited about that. Uh I love the Fallout yeah, universe. So. Could be quite exciting. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Do you think they'll make it as full of glitches as bugs as some of the full game games. They've got to, right? There's They've the, got to sneak in like got... the odd like yeah. person just levitating madly above the ground and stuff. Something along those lines, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Right, so uh, that's us done. We'll be back next week. Um, nice. I think I'm going to try and do a Cinema Continues pod at some point. I have a question. Would people be interested in a, a pure Warhammer 40k podcast, potentially? That would happen maybe every couple of weeks with a rotating cast of people, with other people that have suggested they might want to be involved. You see, you're, you're, you're phrasing that like people have a choice. Yeah, you might get it. Um, so that's that's something that's on, potentially on the horizon, just looking into it and whether it's something we'd, we'd want to do. Um, but yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, if you want to contact us, hit us up on Twitter. It's just at TMTOH on, not on Facebook, on Instagram. It's TMTOH. But come join the Discord, where all the magic happens. Magic, I suppose. Um, <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, it's a pinned tweet on Twitter, and it's in the bio on the Instagram. Thank you all for listening, Duncan. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for letting me come on again. <laughs> And You're welcome, Duncan. <laughs> Another week, eh? Great. <laughs> and Another week Russ. down. Um, yeah. Russ, you got thank any... Thank you, Handies. Thank you, Handies. Nice. Jesus Christ, yes, Duncan. Russ, you got a book to plug? Or anything like that? Uh, <laughs> plug to plug. So. <laughs> no. Plug to fuck. Um, so, um... <laughs> yeah, I've yeah, been... Uh, anyway. my, my novel writing has been really slowed down by trying to get all the Hero, pe- hero Quest stuff painted. <laughs> How have you done with that? Uh, so I'm down to so all I've got to do left is the heroes and the evil wizard. Nice. Um, but I'm letting my son design the color schemes for all of them. Nice. Yeah. So he actually for the elf, he's gone for he he wants her to be like um like a sort of like water spirit version. So she's going to have like a cloak that's like blue and green and looks like the sea. And then we're angling for the barbarian to be in leopard skin pants. Yeah, nice. Yeah. I've I've been, you've got this. I've made some little uh, rock piles 
because the tiles that say where the corridors are blocked off keep getting knocked over by the dice. Hmm. Nice. So yeah, that's taking up like roughly 75-80% of my time at the moment. Hero quest. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Good chat. Right, yeah. If you want to contact us, I've told you all that part already anyway. Um, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Thank you for listening. Handies out there, you are very much appreciated. I promise you that we will always appreciate a handy. Give yourself a big handy. You give yourself a big handy. You see, you Russ, you're on board. It. You get it. You get it. Handy t shirts are coming, by the way. That's mm. that's definitely going to be something that's going <laughs> to I've decided we're going to do handy t shirts. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And on that note, cue the damn music.